Is that true? I don't know. I wouldn't went with Pacific. Do we know the answer, Peanut? Why you put it on me? I thought that's your answer. You supposed to know that. <laughs> you supposed to know the answer to your questions. It is w. the Pacific. Yes, it is the Pacific. I knew. Oh it. my God, you're I terrible. I need a new. Pacific. I need a new co-host. You don't even know the answer to these questions. Well, I thought it was Pacific, but then he said Atlantic, and I was like, I mean, he does have a doctor. Oh is he smarter God. than me right now? I thought <laughs> I, I, I didn't. Sometimes I don't trust my my lower level Alabama. You killing me, Deacon? I apologize. I apologize. I don't trust. Oh my God. (laughs) Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the NFL Player Second Acts podcast. I'm Peanut Tillman, and as always, I got my guy with me, Roman Salt and Pepper Beard Harper. What's up with it? It's good, man. What's good with you, Peanut? It's good having you back. Yeah, Um, yeah. A little bit of I, today I'm I'm really excited because I'm not the only salt and pepper beard brother on the pod today. No, no, no. We yes, we sir. got a we we got a we got a good one. Um let me let me let me read his resume real quick. Uh he's a former wide receiver, first round pick in the 98 draft, played six NFL seasons for the Titans and the Panthers. He's been a part of two of the most memorable plays in NFL history. Um, after his NFL career, he got into education where he earned two master's degrees and he holds a doctorate in education. Please welcome our guest, Kevin Joe Clark, Dr. Dyson. <laughs> I like that. I like that, Joe Clark. Now, I ain't putting no hands on nobody yet, but you know, let's see what's the time. Why not? <laughs> Why haven't you put hands on these little kids? I put hands uh, on my kids every chance I get. Boy, they are bad. Yeah, I know. That's right. You know, I got bills to pay. You know, we're in the climate now. You can't hardly say anything to anybody anymore. But, uh, hey, Rome, I love the, the salt and pepper, brother. You know, you got to keep it going. I colored it Thank for a little while all. now. I'm proudly wearing the salt and pepper. We'll, let's, we'll, we'll get right into this thing real quick. Dr. Dice, can I call you Dr. Do people, do you correct people with the, the doctor part? Or you just let them call you Mr. Dyson or Dr. Dyson? Um, man, just call me whatever. Just don't call me out my name. I tell you like this, uh, getting that those initials before my name was one of the greatest accomplishments I could ever have done personally. And I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily do it for the the name, the moniker. I just did it for the challenge and and right, right. that side of football to be able to accomplish something like that. That's what it was about for that's me. Huge. So, but it, I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of cool though. Yeah. So I'm going to call yeah. you, hey, it's Dr. Cool Dyson, I it like is. it. I'm a- I like it, too. That was one of the big things we talked about, uh, Doc, but Dr. Dyson, before we got on with you, Mr. Kevin Dyson, was that, do, you know, once he earns the doctor, the fact that you went to school, you did all that, like, at that point, man, we got to call you that, because that's hard work, that's time put in, and uh, most people that earn it usually kind of yeah. go by it. At least that's what we said we would, so. Yeah, so I'm going to give you the respect. You yeah, put the yeah, hard no, work in. I appreciate in, that. So I'm a, hey, Dr. Dyson is... All right, so let's. I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to cut the chase. So, as I said, involved in two of the most memorable plays in NFL history. Uh, first, the the Music City mm-hmm. Miracle, the kick, the trick, uh, kick return play, whatever. So, I know you talked about this many times, but I, I just want to know, uh, was it really a forward pass? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look at that. Now, take me and Frank out of the picture. Look at the flight of the ball. You look at the flight of the football. Right. It's look look at the flight of football. Okay. It's slightly back. Okay. Look at that. I got you. So you go by the flight of the football. The 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 rules in the rule book is the flight of the football. Not the is person. The horizontal or slightly back. Not the person. So by that definition, is definitely. Were allowed. you even supposed to be on the field? Like, how did that? Who came up with that play? Um, so Alan Lowry, I guess he had run at, at, um, University of Texas where he went to school. He had run something okay. similar, uh, back in the sixties, okay. I believe sixties or seventies. And, uh, nah, I wasn't supposed to be on the field. So that was something, you know how it is on Saturday mornings, you're going through walkthroughs, you're going through situational football, two minute drill, sudden change, and you're doing something like that. And you got to win plays. Um, that was something that we always worked on on Saturdays. One of the last things we did. And I I was a starting receiver. So I wasn't on kickoff return team or nothing like that. other than hands. That was all I was on. So I was one of those players, like, you know, I had one foot on the field, one foot in the door, ready to go. And, um, you know, you watch it, you see what they, what they do. But at the end of the day, you're like, we're not really going to run this. Like, when is the situation going to present itself? 
when you're going to run this play, right? And um, uh, Derek Mason had gone out. I think he got concussed on a punt return. Around that time, he that was happening, I went in to get an IV. I was dehydrated. I had been, been diluting myself. Go figure, it was cold, and I'd just been drinking too much water and just was diluting myself. And so I was cramping up. So I went in to get IV around the time he's being concussed. His backup, Tony Anthony Dorsett Jr., um, was cramping up at the end of the game. It couldn't. Was run. it like 90 so degrees outside? I, guess, I was like, dude, you guys are no. terribly hydrated. How are you oh my guys God. cramps Oop. everywhere? Sports <laughs> medicine, where y'all at? I, I didn't have enough electrolytes. I mean, I, I learned this later. I, I didn't have enough electrolytes. I was just drinking too much water. Yeah, not others. And so he and he couldn't run. And they called me, I guess, because, you know, I keep returning college, and I did some my rookie year, some punt return and stuff like that. So Jeff Fisher and Al Lowry came up to me, and they started saying, hey, we're going to run home and throw back. You're going to go in there for Mace, and, and uh, if Isaac Bird's going to slide over. They're going to get the squib. They're going to give it to Frank. He's going to ladder it. So they running this whole thing So you weren't even supposed to be in so there. So the <laughs> gist of the play was, no, nah, I wasn't supposed to get the lateral, let alone be oh, in wow. there. So the gist of the play is, you know, in those situations, you play for a squib. Well, we put Frank in, he had great hand to play for the squib, and then he does what he does. Well, the number one return man, if you will, the furthest away from Frank, which would have been Isaac Bird, is supposed to get the lateral. My job was to get in re- pitch relationship with him as he ran down the field. And if he gets in trouble, pitch to me, I get what I get, and get out of bounds, whatever, kick the field goal. Well, they blooped it. Doug Christie blooped it. And so when he did that, I don't know if Isaac, who hadn't really run the play from that position at all, I don't know why. I haven't talked to him in 20 years about it. We've spoken. I just never asked him. And he comes up to field it, and he gets stumbles on him. Now I'm just last man standing. Frank threw it. I To this day, I don't, Frank can tell me all he wants to. He didn't know who was over there. He just threw it. <laughs> and I caught it, man, and it opened up. It was just – all I had to do was I run. That was the easy you, part. They didn't think Frank was going to score, though. That's why he probably <laughs> threw it. So so, so that was another <laughs> thing. So, n- number one, first time hearing this all this story, because I remember this play specifically – the fact that like two people busted makes me laugh, right? Like you would never know that by the way it worked yeah. out. Like actually it wasn't even supposed to go that way, but that's usually how football is. And number two, my my real question right. to you is that why did the whole defense go over there with Frank Wycheck? They, did they think he was going to crib it or something? Like they all went over there and then next thing you know, you were wide open by yourself with a couple of blockers out there running. <laughs> it's just so crazy watching it on TV. I'm like, but looking back on it, I'm like, hindsight's always wow. 20, 20. I'm like, why did everybody go with Frank Wycheck? Like he's just gonna go house it or something? <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to ask him that question. This this is my philosophy on that whole thing. We have been pretty much dominating the whole game. The score wasn't depicting of that. Like you know, what I mean, we it was a close game, but we pretty much were controlling that game up until midway through the fourth quarter, and then they got the touchdown late in the game mm-hmm. to take the lead. And I think. Because it was such a hard fought game, they were just anxious to end it. You know, get the get the make the play, make us go. You know, we didn't have much time left. You, the odds of us going the length of the field or go 40, 50 yards to get a field goal range, I felt like they were like, I'm going ahead and go make this play. So they got out of position. And that's why I don't think DeHay, D, he got, you know, I think it's how to say his last name, DeHay, uh, the special teams coach yeah. for Buffalo. I don't, I don't think he gets, he gets too much blame for the players getting out of position they did not run their lanes and y'all know uh, been on kickoff you got certain lanes that you did then you close to the football they all collapsed even the safety collapsed and all i did was run because i had a wall of people so you know my my job literally i literally did not get touched until i start celebrating that's how that's how how much out of position they were they didn't have to break a tackle nothing they just all saw ball went ball and got out of position and you know phillips and 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 them gets, gets too much blame for what happened from players not necessarily being disciplined that's not a knock on the players because i get it because you know it's a hard fight, playoff game you just tuck the lead i want to be the one to make the play you get a little overzealous sometimes and it just created a, a lane for me to run all right now we heard one of your teachers made a meme of the last play and it's a frame on your desk. It's cool. <laughs> is it still there? Yeah, is it still man. there. Yep, yep. Is yeah, that yeah, just a actually, constant reminder that you're just one yard short? You are just just a little short. Mm, all the football is a game of inches. It's like, what is the, what is that reminder of? Like, it I want to really know. That. Is, what man. is that reminder? 
Ah, oh, man, it's like this. You know, you can't take the good without taking the yeah. bad. And you got there's lessons in both. And I tell people all the time, I think I learned more from that than I did Music Miracle. Like the Music Miracle, I, like I told you, I was supposed to be a part of it. It didn't happen. I was supposed to. I get it. I'm I'm on TV. Everybody's talking about me. The Super Bowl, I'm in the progression. I think I'm in. It's the end of the game. It's the first time, especially in the pros, but from anything in sports that I can remember that I did not get it done that I was not successful at the end. I'm talking about having to hit two free throws at the end of the game to win, like pig K kicks in soccer, game winning catches in football. That was the first time in my athletic life that I can remember it is the biggest game yeah. of my life. And so, you know, I, this is, there's a lot of life lessons in that. You know what I mean? Because you just never know when your opportunity is going to come. You got to be ready for it. And when they do come and you're not successful, what do you do for them from that point on? And that next off season, man, y'all know y'all trained, yeah. man, that, that focus – not that I wasn't focused before, but that focus was hyper, man. I just was like, I want to get back to that moment so bad. I, and, and just to prove, if nobody else, myself, that I can get it done. Uh, I put a lot of a lot of weight, a lot of pressure on myself for not scoring. I blame myself for a lot. And, you know, I've watched that play a million times on highlights. I haven't watched the game. Still haven't watched the game in its entirety. Um, but that play is played every year. People see it, and, and they've asked me this question, like, what could you have done differently and this and that? And – and I've dissected plenty of times. I don't. He just Mike Jones made a good play, man. Yeah. He just sometimes you got to tip your hat, and the guy makes a good play, and that's what it is. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I, I think having having I've I've been asked this numerous times. Like having you know I didn't I didn't go to a a, a great football. Uh, I didn't go to a great school known for football and lost a lot of games. Still got drafted. Played thirteen years. Made my place. Kind of made a name for myself. And people always ask me, what would you change? And I, I give them the same answer. I wouldn't change anything. I, I think things happen the way they were for me. And I know some people, they, they do change that. So knowing yeah. your place in NFL history with those two plays, um, if you could if you could trade them in for a longer career, would you do that? Woo, man, you hit a nerve. I'm going to tell you, Peanut. So, hey, I've thought this a lot. Like, okay, my counterpart was Derek yeah. Mason. And that was my running mate. And we we did a lot of good things together. And before I got hurt, he was my backup, mm -hmm. right? And then I got in and that put him an opportunity, you know, you get opportunity, you don't you don't let it go. And that propelled him to a probably a borderline Hall of Fame career. I think he's in that conversation. He's had that kind of career. Um, and had he been in Music Miracle, who knows? I mean, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Because that was supposed to mean his moment was Music Miracle and he wasn't out there. And it was my moment. Um, and so I've thought about this a, a long time. I never got the big bag because I had all the mm -hmm. injuries, tore my knee, tore my Achilles, <clears> tore my hamstring. Um, but I also recognize that we talked about it. Like, I don't think I – maybe my ambition or motivation to go get the, the master degrees or the doctorate, I don't know if it would have been the right. same. I don't know. I, I, I cause, Because I had a, a – I, had a lot, a lot of life lessons because of what happened after that, after those moments, you know, that was my second year in the, in the league. Um, and that was within three weeks in my second year. And um, after that, the next year, I thought I'm on my way. I'm starting to get the ball coming my way. I tear my knee up. I come back, have a good year. The very next year, I tear my hamstring up, sign a free agent, one year deal with Carolina, tear my hamstring up. And then I just never could never get over that hump yeah. to really prove my worth in the National Football League. Even though I felt like my talent was there, I just couldn't never get over that healthy hump. And so I've thought about this over long, long haul. Would I trade careers with my boy being Derek Mason? Because that's essentially kind of what happened in those moments. I traded a moment for him for the career, if you will, because I got hurt. He ended up stepping into the spot where I felt like I was going to be. And I don't, I don't know. I don't think so because – what I have accomplished since then, I don't know if I would have. I've grown so much more right. as a man in that way. And I know Mace has too. We've talked. But if I would have, I don't know if I would have been the same person I am today without these lessons I've had along the way. Right. Yeah. I mean, th that's really. I that. Yeah, yeah, I do. Especially um, understanding like like what you talked about, the whole, uh, the, the the play that came up short that's still on your, your desk right now. All the life lessons you learn. You learn way more right. from the coming up short, the, the shortcomings in life sometimes and even the biggest successes and 
uh, but it's learning moments in both, right? And um, so in 2003, uh, your last year was with the Panthers. You just kind of reminisced about that for a second. At what point did you know it was time? Mm -hmm. Was it because of all the injuries or was it something else specifically? Well, I still chased the dream for a couple more years. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to uh, Washington um, and I got there at the end. I was having a great camp. I mean, people was like, I was playing with Smoke, you know, Sean Spring, a couple people. It was like, man, you, you still got some stuff in your tank. Okay. And okay. they said, you just coming off the couch? You still got, you coming off the couch like this? I was like, man, I'm, you know. And I get into that room with Vinny Serrato and uh, Joe Gibbs. And they said, man, you had one of the best camps of all our receivers. Uh, but I like to keep a lot of H-backs. Y'all know the old Washington Redskins yeah. offense. Both of y'all play D. So you get, you know what I'm talking about. They was coming downhill. They they kept a lot of tight ends, fullbacks, running backs. That's when they had Clinton Portis. And then they just signed um, Moss. Santana Moss. Um, uh, David Patton. They just drafted. Uh, they signed James Thrash to a multi-year deal. He's special teams guru. They just drafted. Uh, uh, what's his name from Florida? Uh, I forget his name right now. Uh, receiver from Florida. And then they had Sellers. They had Portis. They had all these running backs. And he said, "Man, I just don't know. If we have a spot for you." I said, Coach, I understand that. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't. I was getting cousin because of my talent. It wasn't there. It was because it was game. a numbers game. Yeah. So that first year when we all retired. It can be hard for for some of us. Some of us kind of figure it out. Some of us, we don't. I think I was a guy who struggled my first year. And you've often described uh, the first year in retirement as losing a loved one or yeah. like overcoming an addiction. Yeah. And I think I can relate to it was it's, it was kind of like losing a loss, uh, a loved one. So yeah. what, was, what was that first year like for you? Man, it just like you said, I, you know, there's that 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 moment of depression. I, I feel like I now I can look back on it being older and wiser. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I think I dealt with that. There's an emotional piece. There's a uh, denial. You know, I don't know how many times y'all have watched games and been like, man, I can still do that. I'm watching my backup. I'm watching my backup go get bags. I'm watching, you know, just everything <laughs> going on. There's that. Um, there's anger. I was mad. I was mad at the league, man. I, I was. I was yeah. just like, like it, you know, that that's a whole nother story but i was just like mad because i didn't get that opportunity to prove my worth i felt like and and for different circumstances especially at the end um fear i didn't know what to do next the natural fit was do you go into coaching and i, I chased that for a little while but i don't know if i was about that life either um uh, anxious you wake up you know you're so used to getting up and going and getting lifting weights watching film and all that change, your whole demeanor change, your whole um, philosophy change, right, uh, right. momentum, like everything just started changing. And um, and I, like I said, I keep talking about it as like it's an addiction because there is some form of addiction or even, you know, losing a loved one, too, because it really is. It's the longest relationship you have. You know, you started playing, started playing football when I was seven. I retired when I was 30. That's 23 years of, of a love-hate relationship, right? And so that's why I've, I've equated to that, and especially with the addiction piece, because, man, the dream, you you get addicted to that dream. Right, um, right. Whether, whether you get the multi-million dollar contract or not, whether you get the rings or not. I mean, not they're not trying to say anything about Brett Favre or Tom Brady or even Jerry Rice, guys who played into their 40s, but I can see why. You know why they stay as long as they could. Yeah, um, yeah. Just because, man, that dream. Um, and so – it was rough, man. That first year, I started um, looking to coach. I went a cup. I found how political that was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One school, my even my own alma mater, he was like, you know, Kevin. I don't know if guys that at, at, at coach at this level had never without prior coaching experience. And then a couple years later, he hired Brian Johnson as his quarterback coach. And and I was like, okay, so I see how this is. And then I went to another school. A less, a less. He, yeah, it went another school. I thought he was going to hire me, and then. Then all of a sudden, two schools did this to me, actually. And then all of a sudden, their phones went quiet. And then I look on the Internet, and I see they hired two different people, two different people, respectively. And I'm just like, man, is that really what it is? So I settled in on secondary education, man. And I enjoyed coaching kids at for the time I did it, man. I really did. To be able to share what I had in me with some other right, kids. Right. Um, and then, to be told, I learned a lot more about football. Um that I didn't know, 
you know, if we're so focused in on what we're doing and what the DB's doing, maybe the linebackers to a certain degree. But when I became a coach, especially when I became a head coach, I had to know what the O-line was doing. I had to know what the D-line was doing. I had to right, know why right. coverages did this. I knew why blitzes did that. I had to learn so much more about the game. So I, that would help me grow another appreciation for the game that gave me so much and took so much from me as well. But I grew another appreciation for it. And then that, then I was over it after a while. I started that into to kids. Um, you kind of went into all the things that you dabbled into or got into while you were, you know, after retirement. And I know a lot of emotions probably fueled you and pushed you in these different directions, whether it was anger, anxiousness, uh, fear, whatever that was. But yeah. is it safe to say that the the love for kids, what kind of pushed you and kept you mm -hmm. in this space of education? Like what pushed you there yeah. or was it a person? What exactly got you there and made you stay? Man, that's a great question. I don't think nobody's ever asked me that. Um, yeah, I think it was, I saw I had something that I can give back to kids mm -hmm. and they were gravitating to it. And I knew it was because of my past. I knew part of it was I had that, that, instant that instant um credibility to the kids um uh, because in a lot of them, and at that time the kids grew up watching me play you know right. one of the kids I coached was telling me about when he was four or five years old and he was at the music city miracle with his parents and yet oh, now wow. I'm coaching him you know what I'm saying so here I am cool. quote, one of their heroes if you will and I'm coaching them and so yeah that essentially what got me and kept me where I was and then the whole school thing was just uh, me trying to better myself. Um, I would say, well, if I'm going to be in this secondary educational world, uh, I knew doors would open for me because of my past. So I, my, the term I've used is um, I wanted to be qualified, so I was justified. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to go learn as much as I could about this education world, uh, about teaching. Um, and the second master's, that, that, and I know that's, it sounds impressive, but it was kind of on accident of her had on happenstance. I I was doing a private school thing first, and then um, I had I went to public school and I didn't have a teaching license, so I had to go back to school to get my master's degree, so I get my teaching license. So, and that's how I know with two master's degrees. But the uh, and the doctor we'll talk about later. But um, to answer your question, wrong, yeah, man, the kids ultimately seeing that I had an uh, impact um, kept me there. And um, then when I transitioned, it was kind of the same thing. I, it was. I, grew as a leader, as an individual leader, and I wouldn't only have impact on kids, I saw I was having impact on adults. And that was um, was real cool for me. So I was like, man, I, I kind of like this. So that's why I moved into the administrative, administrative part of it. Don't you apologize anymore for getting all these educations and degrees. Right? right? I feel <laughs> dumb not, right now. Just stop. No, like it's okay. It's okay. Don't downplay it. <laughs> you, Let us you, boost you up. That's why we got yeah. you here. Yeah. Young hey. King. I never thought myself be smart, man. And I, and I, you know, I'm just one thing I do know is how to work, work yep. hard, and, and getting them degrees, man. It was funny, and I've said this, and read what people think. Why I've said it's one of my greatest accomplishments is it. Everything I poured into athletics, I finally poured into my academics, and it's all one and the same. Right. You know, it's, it, it's just a new motivation, a new work ethic. I, I knew determination, all that stuff I did to get myself ready to play football. I just did that same thing for school, and it worked out, you know. And that's what I tell people. It's like, you, you must be smart. I said, no, nah, I just know how to work hard. And, and and that was something I had to work harder at because it didn't come as natural. It didn't come as, natural, yeah. Right? Lifting weights, running running routes, uh, all that stuff you had to do to be put yourself in optimal uh, shape to be a football player. Um, I just did it from an academic standpoint. I mean, you, you said you called it your getting your doctorate like your Mount Everest. I don't know yes. any other former yeah. players that have got that have received a doctorate. And um, what would I often I often think about this? So one of my one of my philosophies is when you lose, don't lose the lesson. And as yeah. I get older, we get right. wiser and we grow and right. we learn. And you said that, you know, looking back, I could say this and I felt that. So what would uh a 30 year old NFL first round pick or first round. Yeah. First round pick. Um, good career say to a principal with a doctorate, mm -hmm. what, what would those two have in common? What would those two talk? What, what, what would that Kevin Dyson say to 
Dr. Mm. Dyson. Wow, man, you two coming up with some great questions. I appreciate this. Um, making me think. Um, There's a lot really, of thought that goes into uh, it. We we got a good yeah, we got a good team. We, we yeah do yeah no yeah no no I appreciate that no that that's real talk that's good because you know I'm writing a book and it's make me evaluate kind of where I'm going with that but you know yeah. if I can if I can go back because they're two totally you know, different worlds twenty two right the twenty two the the thirty year old kid who that dream was just right there right you just you're drafted you're playing in the field played in a couple Super Bowls and that's your world you like that's that's all you know. Um, like I, like I told people, my first master's class, I get in there and the professor says, Hey, we you're talking about what's on the syllabus. You got to do a word Excel. You got to do a PowerPoint. And at that point I had no idea what none of that was. Cause remember like Microsoft word wasn't happening when I was in college. Right. That's how old I know. Right. And so I, I didn't know the world. All I knew was football. I knew the world from like traveling and all those things that afforded us. Cause we have money to do those sorts of things. But I really didn't know the world. I didn't know books. I didn't know academia. I didn't know that side of it. So what I I would, my 30-year-old or younger self would ask myself now, 47, is like, what would you do differently as far as that? I would have taken the time to really enjoy my life and not taking football so serious. I think I took football so serious and put so much pressure on that because I was chasing that bag. I was chasing the dream, wanted a ring. I wanted to be known i wanted the notoriety the all the stuff that comes with playing ball and it, it, i think about it now it's so short-sighted compared to the extent of life like for most of us we end in our 30s and i'm 47 so I'm, i was going to be a young man if i got to play 10 15 years anyway uh so it was going to be the same sort of thing what's what next how am i going to grow as an individual and this is what I would now on this side of it from my older self, the Dr. Kevin Dyson side, telling my younger self, man, it's like you like to believe you have a long life to live, man. And so do everything you think you ever wanted to do. Grow as you can. Grow as an individual. Right. Even do stuff you didn't think you wanted to do or you think didn't think you could accomplish. I never thought I'd go get my doctorate. I, that didn't seem ever in the possibility of what I could do. And to do to be of one percent on being a first round draft pick and one percent of being called doctor in this, in in education, man, you would if you would have told me that was going to be my path, I would have told you, man, you crazy. Yeah, I just thought, okay, yeah, I, I thought I played football, go coach for a few years, and then own a couple of businesses and and chill. Like you know what I mean? Like I didn't I didn't have this. It was not in my plan book, uh, my playbook. It was just happened, and I'm happy it did because. It's taught me a lot about myself. It made me evaluate myself a lot. And I and I even like y'all know you play, you as a professional athlete, we evaluate ourselves every day. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, people don't do that. And we do it as pro athletes because if we don't do it, the coaches are, your teammates are, the fan is, the administration is, we're being evaluated every time. Every time they put that film on, you're being evaluated. So if you don't evaluate yourself and try to get better, then it doesn't, then you're not going to last long. Well, if you don't do that on this side of your, of the equation, you, you're never going to figure out what drives you, the what gives you purpose again, what fuels you, what what helps you make money um, right. to, to support your family. Because, uh, you know, the average life expectancy of a football player is, what, 56, 57, something to that effect. Yeah. So that's not a long time. So hopefully, it's, you know, rest in peace, uh, Franco Harris, he died at 72. Hopefully we can live a lot longer than that, but life is not promised. So what are you going to do today to make yourself better for tomorrow? And that's kind of how I started thinking as I started getting more and more to the educational piece. So that's what I would tell my younger self, man. Just, you know, don't don't put too much pressure on yourself, man. Enjoy the ride and, and do all the things. Do it right. Work hard. Right. Lift weights and all that stuff. But just don't. I've just put too much pressure on myself. And and I think that's a lot of reason why my path was, was, ch- was changed because I was putting too much pressure on me. You know, you hadn't even said it. Yeah. I was first round draft pick 16th overall, but I was also drafted in front of one of the best receivers ever to do it. Randy Moss. I was the first receiver taken. Right. People didn't know I was battling with that my whole career. Like I was dealing with that from a psychological standpoint and social emotional standpoint, all my career thinking like, like belittling myself like do i deserve this like 
here he is doing this, and I'm sitting here, like, watching him go ahead and catch 10, 15 balls a game, and I'm I'm getting scraps, and you know what I mean? And I'm I'm measuring myself up to that, and, right. and I'm assuming everybody else is doing the same, you know? And so I'm walking into uh, meeting rooms or to facilities, and I'm thinking, like, man, everybody wishes I was Moss. And I don't know if that's true or not. It could be, but that's how I was walking in every day, anxious, and then and feeling that. And I know there's other young men that kind of have that same sentiment. There's a lot of pressure we put on ourselves. So my older self, my 47 year old self, would have told told my little 20 something year old kid self, man, just be you. Go out there and be the best version of you. And if that's not good yeah. enough, somebody else will like it, you know. But I didn't think of it like that. Comparison so, is the I, devil's joy. You know what though. Like right. listening, listening to you, uh, Dr. Dyson is just, it's really intriguing into the mindset of where so many of our athletes are in former NFL players' minds are at. And, you know, one mm -hmm. statement that you said in other interviews and other sit downs is that, and it comes to you like wanting to be an educator was that, you know, you want to be qualified so you would be justified. But is that really almost like a synopsis of your whole life and career? The fact that you got drafted in front of Randy Moss, yeah. you never felt qualified for that after you saw what Randy Moss was doing. Mm. You come up one yard short right. in the Super Bowl play where everybody <laughs> remembers when Mike Jones tackles you. So you mm. never felt qualified from there. Mm. You see Derek Mason yep. come in, you're back up, start ball and go get the bag. You can't mm. get over injuries. You mm. never qualify for those <laughs> things too. So you literally, mm. your whole life, you're chasing these things and you never feel it's, it's as accomplished as you were as an athlete, you never felt qualified for anything. And so now you yep. go and get these degrees to make or give yourself this sense of like, okay, I belong. And yep. so it, it, has that really done that Damn. for you? Has that yeah. really done that for you? I, I think that's what we need to get across to all of yep. our listeners and people watching is that like so many of us never feel qualified for as accomplished yep. as we are. We never feel where we truly are justified like man we did it right because yeah. uh, we didn't reach that moment we didn't hit that goal whatever that is and yeah. so has being this educator like have you reached that goal and maybe if you have or have not what was so fulfilling about it or have you got to this place of fulfillment yet yeah man wrong man look at y'all man look hey that's <laughs> hey that's deacon right there that's why i was like mm. Mm. all i needed was an organ that's that's the deacon right there that's the, when hey, you hear me going, mm, mm, this is definitely mm, beyond sport right here. Mm, I love mm. it. This is definitely beyond sport, and this is right my alley right here. So I appreciate this. Y'all don't even know. Listen, you hit it right on the head, man. As, I, as I've um, grown and done that self evaluation and trying to learn what's what and be who I am, that's exactly it, man. This is, I think, why I'm so driven to be successful at this part of it is. It is my own thing. It's something different than what anybody ever expected from me. Mm -hmm. You know, even as a kid, being the best player on the team or whatever it was, and never feeling like I ever fulfilled those expectations in a lot of respects. Yeah. Um, this was my thing. Um, and, it, you know, the whole saying, man, and you, we, you talk about my book right now. I'm like, I got to finish it. But this, <laughs> this is this is what it is, man, being, being qualified. So I was justified. And, um you know, like you talked about, I've had so many of those. I was right there and I never got over the hump. I never yeah. was. And, you know, I had I had a moment or two, you know, the Super Bowl, the Missy Miracle and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I've always said humbly that to be still be relevant 20 some odd years later. Um, that's something I don't take for granted because there's a lot of cats that y'all know that play with us, play right. after us and play before us that people don't talk about, don't know about. And they have all these Hall of Famers get those rings and get into the Hall of Fame, but nobody knows about them. So for me to actually have something people still talk about, still want to talk about, you know, it's humbling. And I appreciate that. But the end result of it is, I think as a man, I had to have something I can identify for me that was mine, that was my mm -hmm. own, that I wasn't chasing somebody else's dream. I wasn't chasing uh, a, a ghost. I wasn't chasing the the success of Randy Moss. I wasn't right. chasing the success of my running mate, Derek Mason. I wasn't chasing everybody's expectations of me, you know, and, and I'm, I'm truth be told wrong. 
I'm just now getting there. Now I'm just now realizing that as I'm doing all this writing and, and things of that nature and talk about it, I'm just now understanding that in the last year or two. So this is, I've been retired since I was 30. We're talking 15 it's years. A, a of long just process. Thinking, yeah. Right. And I'm, and as I think now you're starting to hear more about the mental health piece and, and mm -hmm. all the stuff that some of our teammates, our former players and stuff have gone through with CTE, depression, suicide, and all that kind of stuff. It just makes you pause for a second. Like, am I okay? You know, and, 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 and you're like, okay, so what am I hanging on to? You know, and I still, don't get me wrong. I still got my faults, man. I, I still have my struggles. My wife will tell you that for sure. But, um, it, but it's a, it's an ongoing process. And when I think it started with knowledge itself and I'm trying to get to learn myself, cause you're talking about 40 some years of habit or history that I'm trying to right. unfold, unpack and figure out. But you said it in probably better terms out loud that I don't know if I've ever shared with anybody, but truth be told, yeah, man, I feel like I've been chasing ghosts my whole life. And and it's and it's only self inflicted. It's only because of me. I don't Randy Randy wasn't worried about me. Mace wasn't worried about me. You know? Shoot, no, hey, they they were doing the same thing. They were trying to make the most of their careers, do what they could to the best of their ability. Same thing. Yeah. They weren't thinking about me. And here I am worried about dang, how I measure up, you know? So but yeah, man, that's deep, man. You got me on the therapy couch now. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he 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 is old and wise. You said you're 47. I think Rome 51, right? <laughs> yeah, I think Rome 51 with them suits he be wearing. <laughs> hey, so I was look, clean gonna, too the other night, boy. Clean. Hey, you was you was clean, clean with the with the turtleneck looking like a a, a black Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I saw him the other night. Doing the little draft clean, show. Though, I still wear the turn next too, so we about the same age. You know? Yeah, y'all look like Tennessee, uh, Alabama pimps over there. All right, look, we gonna take we gonna take a, a quick break. We gonna pay some bills, and when we come back, we gonna have a couple of questions that uh, hopefully you can answer. You got the doctorate and everything, Doctor Dyson. Yeah. So we're gonna ask you a couple of questions that uh, a fifth grader should know. So uh, oh, tune in. Here we go. We'll be we'll be we'll be right back. You you the educator, so. Joe College, this this is for you now, okay? Uh, yeah, you use right, it or we'll lose it, man. Them, them, uh, <laughs> ask me some, ask me something about football. I can answer that. We'll do, we'll do. We'll be right back. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for having us back. Thank you for listening. Thank you for paying our bills. All right. So now we're here with Doctor Kevin Dyson. Wide receiver number one in the 2000, what draft? 2003 draft, 98. right? 98. 98. 1998. Do your homework, Rome. Yeah. I'm, a, Bro, I'm, a I'm 90s, just trying to, I'm, I'm just trying baby. to, yeah, I'm trying to put all these things together. Anyways, <laughs> he not a that's not guy. important. <laughs> now, now we man. get to call him doctor. We are going to make him, a, we're going to challenge yes. him today. All right. Woo! That we're going to make you a little bit more nerve wracking here. All right. So we're going to kind of, Put it all out there. And uh, so defending your doctorate dissertation <laughs> or jumping out of an airplane with the Army Golden Knights. Ooh. Oh, wow. Um, I've done both. And I tell you what, they both were like bucket list. Never thought I'd do it. Which uh, one was more nerve wracking? Ooh. I'm gonna go with jumping out the airplane. Good. I don't blame you. That sounds yeah, way more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. The reason being is as as because I was nervous wreck when I was defending my my dissertation, but my advisor, she stopped. She stopped me. She said, Kevin, you know your research. Relax. This this is this is not even like this is not playing in the Super Bowl. Just you know it and talk. And once she did that, I settled down and I was able to defend my my research. Okay. But that jumping out the plane, I had no control. So <laughs> <laughs> Did you jump out of a C-130? I don't even remember what plane it was, man. They probably told me I wasn't paying attention. My mind was like, man, I just want to get to the ground. But I tell you what, it's the most liberating experience I ever had in my life. And when I was done, I want to go right back up. And I, I, I will go again. Oh, yeah, yeah. So my question to you now, these are fifth grader questions. You should know these. You, you have a doctorate. So <laughs> no offense if you don't know them. Just throwing it out there, doctor. Dr. Dyson, um, who was the 16th that. No president no pressure. of... The United States, no pressure. This is this is live, by the way. So, no, who, uh, who what, is the sixteenth president of the United States? Sixteenth. Six, Who's the sixteenth president of the United States? 
one six. DAC says I'm bilingual too. DC say so. Um, sixteen. Who? <laughs> I'm gonna go with Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. I would have to say that is incorrect, sir. It is Abraham Lincoln. All right. That was gonna be my first okay. choice. Like, what is what? Yeah, yeah. It, it was what we weren't even trying to trick you on that one. What is the largest and deepest <laughs> ocean in the world? Largest and deepest? The Atlantic. Yes. Both of them. Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I don't know. I wouldn't went with Pacific. Do we know the answer, Peanut? Why you put it on me? I thought that's your answer. You're supposed to know that. <laughs> you supposed to know the answer to your questions. It is w the Pacific. Yes, it is the Pacific. I knew oh it. Oh my God. You're I terrible. I need a new Pacific. I need a new co-host. You don't even know the answer to these questions. Well, I thought it was Pacific, but then he said Atlantic, and I was like, I mean, he does have a doctor. Oh is he smarter God. than me right now? I thought <laughs> I, I didn't. Sometimes I don't trust my my lower level Alabama. You killing me, Deacon? I apologize. I apologize. I don't trust. Oh my God! Him. Don't trust. All me. right. So the the Statue of Liberty was a gift uh, from what country? Oh, I know this one too. France. Yes, you got Boom. that one. Yeah. Our oldest and longest uh, ally, world ally from from the Europeans. Great job. All right. Who is the author of the book To Kill a Mockingbird? Oh man! Ooh, ooh, ooh! ooh. <laughs> yeah, that one. Give it to him. Oh. What you got, dog? <laughs> he buying time. Oh. He's stalling. That's what that is. That's, that's all I am. That's the stall. Ooh, that's, ooh. yeah. I don't know it. And in his mind, he's like, know. I have no damn idea. <laughs> hey, here's the reason why. So you know, in that book, they say some choice words, and we're in a climate. They do. Where, you know, they do. And, and you had to deal with that in school. I had to deal with it, and I'm yes. trying to. I got all the characters' names mentioned. I cannot remember the author's name right now. Finch. I know Mr. Finch was one of the guys. Finch. Is that? Yeah. Boo. Um, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Oh, you got me. See? Oh. <laughs> Maybe we should skip it, and then we'll come back to it. All right? We got one more question. <laughs> Peanut, you want to get on the last question? Then yeah. I'll so uh, the last one. here's right. a science question. Which planet in our solar system is known for its beautiful rings? Saturn. Yes. Boom. All right. Who is the author to kill a mockingbird? Go. <laughs> oh, man. I'm thinking of all the characters. I, I can't remember. You know what's going to be messed up? I'm going to get off here. I'm not even going to Google it. I'm going to walk out and, like, there it is. Watch. Uh, you going to tell him wrong? Oh, no, man. you are. What is it? Harper Lee. Harper Lee. Harper yeah. Lee. Dang, going it. <laughs> God dang it. Harper oh. Lee. That's what it is. I knew that's what it is. <laughs> That's my that's uh, my name. I, that that's what I was gonna say, son. Right? Ah, dang it. That's right it. That's what I was gonna say. That's uh, it right there. <laughs> oh, you know man. they dang they got that book banned now from education because of the words in it. But the choice words, yeah, yeah. My kids deal with it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Doctor Dyson, man, I can't. We can't thank you enough for just sharing your uh your story with us about the league, education, the first year of retirement, um, just. Hey man, you 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 blessed us today, and I just want to say thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I love what you've done post football. You know, people see you as a person, not just a football player, but you, your principal of a high school, man. That's that's big. That's that's powerful. I love that you reclaimed your worth and just everything you're doing. And I'm wishing you nothing but growth, success on this uh, upcoming book that you have. Hey, Kevin, man, I would like to say thank you too, bro, um, for really just being an open book for us today and really sharing your emotions, your past, uh, things that you've been through, which really led you to this to today and, and sharing with our listeners. So thank you, brother. No, I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all getting me on the couch a little bit. And, you know, it's easier to share that with guys that you feel like, you know, you understand. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Y'all y'all been there in your own way. We've been through um, it a lot too. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, and again, doing this podcast, I do one as well, um, similar talk about transitioning, um, um, through life because people have asked me about my story. And so I've been doing something similar with my podcast and, um, and I just appreciate y'all probably 
provide me the opportunity because there's a lot more. And here I am again, right? There's a lot more people, way more famous or whatever than me that could share their story uniquely. But um, I guess I got a story to tell, and um, I'm I'm appreciative of y'all providing the opportunity to share it. No yeah. doubt. No we doubt. all got stories, but thank you for sharing yours with us and being vulnerable. Much respect, Doc. We appreciate Absolutely, you. Absolutely, Thank you, bro. Appreciate I appreciate it. you. Thanks, Dr. Dyson, for blessing Peanut and I with your time, your experience, your words. Once again, thank you to all the listeners for tuning in. I want to ask you to spread the word and to give us a rating, a review, and a follow on anywhere you pick up your podcast at, whether it's Apple Podcasts, the iHeartRadio app, or wherever else you tune in at for all your podcasts. Thank you so much for joining us again. Shout out. We out of here. And we out.